Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I'm joined by Jerry Porter of hazelshould.com Drums and Cymbals. Jerry, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here, Bart. It really is. Yeah, man. You uh, have so much knowledge about this stuff. I, I want to tell everyone right now, <laughs> while you're listening to this, go to hazelshould.com. Look at the Hazelshould Museum. It is insane, the amount of drums and cymbals that have gone through your hands over the years. I assume you don't own everything that's on that museum not, page. Not presently. I mean, but I have owned yes. 99.9% .9 of the things that are on that museum page. And I should say that museum page features about 5% of the cool stuff that I've had. So I just have not had time to um, upload all the things. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and, and I want to hear a little, I want to hear kind of your explanation of what you do and, and what makes Hazel should so special, but it's the kind of thing where I, I was looking at it and I was scrolling down and I was like, oh, it's still scrolling, still scrolling, <laughs> still scrolling. And it just like the little like scroll tab kept getting like smaller. And it's like, it's basically endless. So what we're going to talk about today, I think is we're going to talk about rare symbols some of the rarest symbols that have come to your hands and also maybe ones that you're looking for that would be holy grail symbols for you. Uh, we're going to be talking about famous symbols, tones, things that, you know, have come up in your life over, uh, you know, in, in your experience with Hazelshut. But first things first, I want to thank Luke Robinson, who suggested you uh, as a guest on the podcast, which I always love when people do that. It took a while. I think it was back in June, but I was I have gotten way behind on booking and emails and everything, so I appreciate Luke doing that. But um, all right, so Jerry, can you just explain for people who don't know what is Hazel should? What do you do? What's kind of your elevator pitch that you tell people about what you do? Well, I specialize in I guess curating, procuring rare symbols and drums. Um, I, you know, over the years, I've been doing it about twenty five years. I'd say over the years. I've migrated more heavily to cymbals. Um, I like cymbals. Not that I don't like drums. It's just that cymbals, it's the tone is innate. You know, you hit a cymbal and that's what it does. That's what it sounds like. Drums, you can tune them differently. You can change heads. Um, there's a lot more variables that goes into drums, but the, the, the sonic nature of cymbals is sort of born or baked in and i i, I don't yeah. know i find that fascinating um they do you know the the their tone is mutable if you use a different stick like if you use a sure. peter erskine stick versus like a 2b or something of course the tone changes and obviously it changes from player to player but um i don't know symbols have an illustrious history you know, yeah. they, they, you know, starting uh, well way back in China thousands of years ago, but also in in Turkey. Obviously, Turkey is famous for symbols and the the Sultan's court and that whole thing and how they're handmade yep. and hand hammered. And then they, the Zildjian company, you know, migrates over here at the turn of the last century, and they start uh, what they had a confectionery, right? And yep. then that whole story, they, you know, imagine owning a candy shop and then being like, you know, somebody calls you on the phone like, hey, yo, you got to be, I know you left, but you got to pick up the mantle of symbol making. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me, I think Karope, yeah. Uncle Karope or Karope yeah. or whatever calls and it's like, put down the candy. Yeah. We're making symbols. <laughs> Stop slinging <laughs> lollipops. And so, you know, that's a fascinating history. And obviously like yeah. Peisty and what they're Estonian. I, I yep. you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, they're they're Swiss, and you're like, what? I think they're Estonian. <laughs> yeah, and, originally. Yeah. yeah, and so, and also just, I don't know, you put them up on the symbol and you hit them, and there's a release in the physical striking a symbol. It resonates, and yeah. I don't know, there's a the joy. Alchemy, in it. the whole yeah. alchemy thing too is very interesting. Mm -hmm. it's mixing metals, and it's just uh, symbols. Also, like you said, they they go back really 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 far which means that there's very very old symbols that are super sought after yeah and that i guess age doesn't make it the only thing that makes it sought after i'm sure there's some you know caveats to that but i don't know what why don't you talk a little bit about uh what makes a symbol really really rare and then maybe we can hear some examples of some of those holy grail symbols sure um some of it depends on 
what you find of value. You know, wh- how, I mean, there, there's things that as individuals, as individual drummers, we imbue with value. And then there's other things collectively as drummers or as the collective drumming, buying and selling market that we imbue with value uh, collectively. Like, for instance, one of the most famous symbols is the vintage Zildjian Istanbul K. And, you know, those are Zildjians that were made, uh, you know, at the, in the, in Turkey, um, that I think the Turkish plant closed around the late sixties, maybe the early seventies. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, and then it migrated. Right, they they migrated to uh, Canada, uh, which uh, ultimately became Sabian. And I think they had some of the old vintage Zildjian, uh, the the Turkish symbol smiths, also migrated to Canada. So there's an interesting lineage there, but. Yeah. Those symbols are fairly rare and what makes them, you know, what makes them rare or sought after primarily is who played them and what recordings they're on. So, you know, Art Blakey used used them famously. One of the most famous and sought after tones among any drummer is going to be Tony Williams. He famously used a 22 inch Istanbul bouquet um on like the what what people call like the Nefertiti ride or some people who dig deep are like oh what what was he playing on you know f- uh four or more um it, it it you know drummers hear it and they think this is the perfect elixir of great stick attack mixed with a, a breathy wash um it sits in the mix in a beautiful way. It it doesn't get in the way of Miles Horn or any of the other instrumentation. Yet you still hear, you still hear Tony Williams' timekeeping on the cymbal. You still get this breathy, atmospheric, I don't know, inimitable quality that is pervasive sure. throughout the song. And so people yeah. are forever on a quest to find that. Um, and I sometimes think as much as I love vintage Zildjian Istanbul K's and I own several at right now, I even have right now on the website, I have a very rare 24 inch. Yeah. It's on sale. It's on yeah. your sale tab. So there's a, there's a deal. There's yeah, a deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you too can sound like Tony Williams. Um, <laughs> but it, you know, of course those recordings are famous and yes the 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 un, the elephant in the room is well it's tony williams and miles sure. davis and herbie hancock and ron carter you know that coming yeah. together is of course what creates such a beautiful recording that is familiar to the ear but yet we all sort of i think as listeners want to be connected to such a beautiful piece, such a beautiful recording, such a timeless era, especially, let's say, for Miles Davis and Tony Williams. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, owning a vintage Zildjian Istanbul K from that period, you do feel connected with the past, and there's some spiritual component in there where you sit down at your kit, you start playing. You may not sound anything like Tony Williams. You might yeah. not be playing with Miles Davis, but mm-hmm. they're it's inspiring and yeah you know totally. I, but is it also yeah. fair to say that each of those you know k istanbul symbols does not automatically sound uh I'm not, i don't want to say they sound they might sound good or bad but they might not they all sound different right you might not get one that you like really oh absolutely you... and and especially with the vintage Zildjian istanbul k's because they are hand hammered and you know Throughout history, symbols were hand hammered. Um, I believe, you know, in t- for time in memoriam, until I think around the time of Ringo and the Ed Sullivan show, and Ludwig started slapping white on the interior of the drums to keep up with the orders. And you know, I yeah. think Zildjian start, yeah. made, started to uh, machine make symbols. I, I can't remember the exact year, but maybe sure you know around the mid 60s or something like that by the time you're yep. obviously in the 70s it's a lot of it's machine made and um that's not a bad thing i think i you know among symbol smiths and artisans we all kind of look at that like oh my god how could you possibly deign to play <laughs> something as you know monstrous yeah. as a machine made symbol but um yeah 
you know, at the end of the day, they're tools. Yeah. Um, and sure. When they were hand hammered back in the day, that a lot of symbol smiths today are doing, like the young and budding, burgeoning symbol smithing market. Um, they did have more idiosyncrasies to them. When you when you have a Zildjian from the 1940s or 1950s or an Istanbul K, there is um, this uh, musicality that floats about that a machine made symbol lacks. Hmm. And yeah. I, I do hear it. It's not just bogus marketing. You know, I do yeah. hear it, and other people hear it too. I mean, that's one of the things that also makes that era of Zildjian. A, they were made in Turkey. B, they were hand-hammered and handmade. C, they're rare. D, they're played on some of the most famous recordings by some of the most famous drummers, you know, drummers who are in the pantheon of 20th century playing. Yeah, it's like a perfect mix of, I mean, that's what makes that makes things rare. It's almost like, too, like there's a little bit of like a, like a playing card kind of thing where it, it gets like... It's a very popular kind of symbol because it's rare. Maybe a little bit of it is it's rare because it's popular. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone kind of knows to hunt for that and to look for that. And we talk about it and it makes the whole value go up where that's kind of how collecting works is sure. you know, one person buys it and it gets more expensive. I mean, do these come up once a year when you're hunting? Do they come up like once in a decade? I mean, how rare are they? That's... That's a great question. Um, there's a finite amount of them. That's another thing of rarity. Like, for sure. instance, there's no more Fabergé eggs. There's mo no more Vincent van Gogh paintings. Every once in yeah. a while, maybe f someone finds one at a, you know, whatever, a pawn shop or an attic or something. But And yeah. that is also true about Istanbul case. But um, I... <sighs> For me, it's more common. I know a lot of people. I know a ton of drummers. Okay. I've been doing this 25 years. Everybody, many people know that I buy and I sell uh, specifically cymbals. Um, and so I have a lot of people who reach out to me directly and they say, hey, I have this Istanbul K, you know, I'd like to move it, you know, so I thought I'd call, I thought I'd contact you. And that makes sense. Um, so I probably I, I see more than the average person. Um, you know, if, if if you go hunting, you can find them on the standard websites of Reverb and you know that sort of thing. They're 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 on there, and you know by yeah. popular sellers or symbol collectors will have them. That sort of thing. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. You're you're in a different position where uh, yeah, it's your your people are coming. It's like Steve Maxwell. There's certain people where things come to them, which, uh, you know, I'm sure you still love the, you know, you're at a pawn shop or something and you find something that's just unbelievable. There's a thrill that I, you that we all love. That's ga it's <laughs> gambling. Know? It's gambling. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna you know yes. you buy the lotto ticket up at the up at the corner and you, and you want to see what the stamp is. You know, you, you go exactly. like you know you're at the pawn shop. I remember that many many times. I mean, there's there's a little less of that now, I think, but at the advent of eBay, when it was um, brand new, you know, in the late nineties, early two thousands, there was all of a sudden there's a, Oh my gosh, there's a, uh, uh, there's, what is this engraved grayish black drum? And you're like, yeah. Oh, that's a 1920s Ludwig black beauty. And if yeah. you find that, or if you find a, you know, radio, if you, if you find a, uh, a Rogers Wood Dynasonic, it, it, there, there was a gambling part nature to it that was, uh, it, it was a, a nexus of all the enjoyable things. There's drums. Yep. There's oh my god, what did I win? And there's uh, you know, money and yeah, and, and just you know, sort of the hunt. I think I think yeah. yeah, totally. And it still does happen. I mean, I yeah. did the episode recently with uh, with uh, uh, Brooks Tegler and the new owner Steve about the the uh, Gene Krupa drum set that got found in a basement and an auction. That's right. And that's a little different. It was an auction. It was on the forums, but it, the hunt is still, still out there, but all right. So we all know vintage K's are super rare. Now, what would be something that's, you know, maybe, uh, another one that's maybe not quite as well known. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot, you know, throughout the different companies, 
Sabian, Peisty, Istanbul Agap, you know, Istanbul Mehmet, Bosphorus, UFIP, yeah. Um, you know, you could say, uh, you know, Spizzacchino, all sorts of, you know, Mike Skiba, Skiba symbols. Yep. Th- there's, there's, each company has their own Van Goghs or Fabergé sure. ads. And, you know, say, take for instance, yeah. Peisty, the, um, the early 602 22 inch dark ride, which became the sound creation dark ride. I actually have one, um, I have one right now. I have a 20 inch, but the 22 mm. was famous because, you know, Jack <clears throat> DeJanette played it and Jack DeJanette has a signature tone and uh, yep. he's a very musical player. And, um, that would be an example of a, of a Peisty, a collectible Peisty that has an illustrious history. Also famously the Roy Haynes, uh, the Roy Haynes 18 inch 602 flat ride that's on Chick Corea's Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. Uh, if mm. you go listen to that, and if you pretend like you know nothing about drums or don't know that that symbol is being played, you listen to that sound and you go, God, what is that symbol? Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's high. Special. Yeah. It's, and it's high pitched, and you go, There's something about the tone of this. That doesn't sound like an ACDC record <laughs> or yeah. whatever you want to say, or, or like, uh, you know, a Kenny Clark recording, you know, or something, you yeah. know, uh, uh, you know, he, a Max Roach, Clifford Brown, you go, there's something different here. What is he doing? What is he playing? Sure. And the way it sits in the recording is, you know, has, has become famous over time. Part of it's the music, and it's 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 that magic place where the players and the music and the instruments come together to create something special. Totally. You read my mind to say, well, there's another couple examples of where players make the symbol famous, but it makes perfect sense because if you make a symbol, you sit it in a room, it doesn't do anything. You need it to be out on the records being played. It's as, It's only as good as the you know, the player who's playing it and the that's kind of luck in a way where it's like, you know, the, the way it's recorded kind of helps with that. All, all those magical things that mix together. But what about Sabian? Because Sabian is a newer brand in the big picture. I think 81, 82 is when the split happened with with Bob. Yeah. Uh, or when I know there was a year where they couldn't sell in America and it was that whole thing. But early 80s. So comparatively to a lot of things. But yeah, what's what's some rare uh, Sabians that you look for. Sure. I, I mean, straight up the early HH sound control rides, they have like, you know, symbol holics will pursue those. And I don't know if any, you know, some, some of your listeners might be symbol holics or, or remember symbol holic. The, there is a famous website, symbol holic where, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a great site. And I think they're back up on Instagram and chat. I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Though, I mean, there, there was a, like a library of information and, 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 you know, really, uh, really great people who would share their knowledge on that. And, um, you know, the red label HH Sound Control 22 is just, uh, the, the Sabian is just a, a fantastic sounding symbol and one that guys will, you know, pursue and look for and with good reason. I've owned a lot of them and they sound consistently terrific. They're dark, hmm. they're low. You know, by now they're, you know, 40 years old, so they've mellowed, they've aged, they do, like they have a particular lushness to them. Um, I think Sh- Sabian gets the, the short shrift on a lot of the, the symbol. When we talk about symbols, like, look, Meinl has sort of exploded on the scene with their Byzant series. A lot of people love yep. them. They're great. They're Turkish symbols, you know. I mean, Meinl as a company is not that, but... When I find some of the Minel Byzant stuff, I'm like, well, this stuff sounds terrific. They've done a great job. They've done a fantastic job marketing. But a lot of this stuff existed already. It's not sure. like, yeah. I mean, if you were paying attention to like, you know, Istanbul Agap or Istanbul Mehmet or some of the other lesser known Turkish companies out there, they're making similar stuff. Now, sure, Minel put their own little, you know, their own little stamp on it you know li- literally and figuratively so and they make great <laughs> symbols but yep. it was if you're a symbol freak that stuff was it i don't hear it and go what is this brand new device 
You know, the, yeah. the Turkish companies have been making that stuff for a long time. I, but I don't think they sure. had the marketing juggernaut behind them that Meinl did, and Meinl put time and money and energy into it, so they, they've been rewarded. This week's episode is proudly sponsored by GM Designs Custom Symbols. GM Designs is far from your average symbol company, as they specialize in creating one-of-a-kind symbols that are truly unique. Their extensive product catalog boasts over 160 distinctive offerings, with new additions introduced on a monthly basis. Their expertise goes beyond crafting original symbols. They also revive forgotten concepts, breathing new life into them for enthusiasts to rediscover. Within the last six months, GM Designs has achieved more remarkable milestones, including they currently produce the largest clap stack on the market at 16 inches, 18 inches, and 20 inches. They created Neptune, the thinnest crash ride symbol available on the market, Luna, a symbol exclusively designed for snare drums, the Nebula, a raw blank that's been expertly hand-hammered, lathed but left untrimmed, delivering the deepest, most soulful tone in a ride symbol. Whether you're a studio musician, a touring professional, or an enthusiastic beginner, GM Designs Custom Symbols has something for you. Explore their gallery of products, find store links, and discover their latest features at gmdsymbols.com. Don't miss out on the incredible craftsmanship and innovation at gmdsymbols.com. I have learned that every company has its own really cool history. There's no like, and I think early on in my drumming life, I did that with Sabian where I'd go, you know, oh no, Sabian, I like Zildjian. <laughs> but it's like, it's not fair. And it was, because then, then I mean, really as a, as a kid, I don't think, I, I definitely didn't realize that, you know, Robert Zildjian Sabian and it's in I didn't realize the the history of it all and yeah. and you can dismiss these companies and go like boo Tama I like Yamaha boo Ludwig I like Slingerland and it's like no they all have their own cool history mm -hmm. they're all very hard working companies but uh people certainly are brand loyal that's for sure they and are that's a big factor and uh, you know I would say all of the symbol companies make great, certainly usable symbols. There's all sorts of symbols yeah. from every single company that you could take on a gig and you're not, you know, the symbol's not going to get you fired. <laughs> you know, the, the, no. the, the lead singer's not going to come up and go like, yeah, all this stuff you did tonight was pretty good, but what the hell is that 18 inch that you're using on the left side? Because that's, <laughs> yeah. you know, you've got the gig, yeah. kid. Yeah, it's yeah. I love that symbol. <laughs> I love that symbol. It's something that you know you don't really hear from lead singers. So no. um, we grow up with looking at what your heroes play, and the companies, you know that that's been going on since drums, dr the drum set, uh, you know, was born, and Gene Krupa yeah. and Buddy Rich, and you know all the marketing that those guys would do, and the the stumping they'd do for the companies. It's understandable, yep. and I I think that yeah, it's easy to get carried away into this is what I should be playing because my favorite drummer plays that and. I think that's great because that's the inspiration. We all should be inspired. We all should be playing something that inspires us. Or if you see Jimmy Chamberlain, he's playing a gops or whatever, you're like, this is what I want to play. Great. But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, a Sabian AA, despite the fact that it's not that cool on eBay, that can be a great symbol. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can play a ton of gigs Absolutely. with that. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you though. So like brands like I'm always intrigued and I want to do an episode with them, but there's always been kind of a language barrier or just something that gets in the way. UFIP. What's mm. your experience with getting, finding UFIPs in America? You know, like what's the rare ones? I always hear the splashes are great. Their splashes are great. You nailed it. I mean, you know what the, I had a UFIP class splash. It was a class series 10 inch splash. I don't know. I bought it like 25, 30 years ago. I hit it and I went, this is the best symbol I own. And I never thought wow. that the best symbol I own would be a 10-inch splash. But it just did the thing. It did what I wanted it to do. So I think yeah. UFIP's one of those companies that did really well in the late 90s. There was, you know, like Istanbul Agap was coming, you know, I Istanbul was coming alive. Bosphorus was coming alive. L UFIP caught that wave. And everybody was like, wait, we don't all have to play Zildjian. What is this stuff? This is cool. True. And yeah. I, I think they've sort of, I don't know if the marketing or maybe somehow they, they, they were not able to get to maintain the foothold in the U.S. like they should have. They make fantastic symbols. Um, 
Sure. I really like the Natural series, which is sort of like mm. a Turk. Like that would be like their Turk ride. It's like a raw, dry yeah. with a little bit of complexity in there. Their Natural series is great. I mean, Charlie Watts famously played the flat ride. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. fit flat ride. Um, yeah. They make great and stuff. And their roto, the, their, the casting is like it's spun. Yeah, or roto something, casting. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. They yeah, have, how often do those come up? I mean, do you see them pretty often? I do, I do. I have a fair amount of them right now. Um, they, I mean, you can find them. They're out there, but it does take. That's like a mid-level hunt. <laughs> that's okay. yeah. That's that's not you. You you know that's not like let me go find a Vincent Van Gogh. I I mean yeah. I suppose the 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 Van Gogh of that would be the the sort of Charlie Watts era flat ride. That would be the one that's yeah. the most sought after, obviously, uh, because yeah. of Charlie well, Watts. Well, sure. Yeah. Because um, of Charlie Watts. There it is again. I mean, it's again, it's it's people, it's what, it, you know, uh, if if people might be searching for a Zilko, because Ringo, uh, was it Zilko or as? He had, uh, what, was it, what Ringo? Well, yeah, I think he had a Peisty Super. Was it a, or, okay, or a Turco? There was, well, Maybe it's a Crut and a Turco in there with the rivets. S- yes. Something. Yeah. Some off-brand kind of B second line, second whatever series with, symbol where it, was an 18 it would normally with, have no value. I think an eighteen with rivets. Yeah, I can't remember yeah, if it was a yeah. crut or whatever. But um, sure. that's a perfect example. That's a that's a that's a symbol that it's strange. It's like they inhabit these little corners. If you, if you imagine the entire symbol world as one big house, you know they they, they inhabit this little corner in a crawl space in the in the attic where you're like, oh, here's a crut. <laughs> <laughs> that, the that most rig- unfortunate you know. name in uh, symbol history would be Crut. <laughs> and do you know where that <laughs> came from? No. What is it? It's tur- oh, is it backwards? It's Turk it's tur- backwards. It's Turk backwards. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, there's a whole- It's a good name. It's a good name. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I think when it comes to rarity and that sort of thing, you know, we can go into the sort of the illustrious history, who played what, or there's a finite yeah. amount of them. But in the modern era, you know, of symbols that are being- made today obviously the Sp- spizzacchino symbols um you know yeah. th- th- that those are the last 25 years or so whatever it's been um th- yeah. th- those are those are at the top of that pile with good reason they're beautiful uh roberto yeah. spizzacchino was a symbol ma- you know a symbol master and i'm glad that he's getting the respect um you know that he deserves um do you come across those how- fairly often from time to time uh i don't have any at the moment i do have a lot of great um sort of um you know uh, uh custom symbol smiths now i have some great borba symbols i have uh mangiello i have lauritsen uh who's australian symbol topia um uh you know there's a there's it's 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 blowing up. I mean that that yes. is blowing up and and it's cool. I'm glad to see that people are I don't know there's a respect for the for the the artisanry of it. Um Totally. It is an art. You do see I think like for instance there is an Istanbul Agop prototype that's pretty rare out there. Um there's a few of them that can command good money. Now that's a modern symbol obviously modern symbol company they made so everybody knows the 25th anniversary uh symbol 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 holic symbol freaks know that the t- the 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 25th anniversary was a 20.5 inch symbol that came out it was like the first agop that was blue where everybody goes okay. whoa what here's a symbol that's blue you know so they put that out to uh thunderous applause and they did make a few of those that were sort of in a like what were called a vizier model, which is I think the the underside is raw and the top side is lathed, but the entire symbol is still blue. I have one on on the hazelshow.com um, museum page site. There is, there is one of those up there, and that's an example of a modern symbol that's rare, collectible. Um, you know, Istanbul Agap has exploded. They've done really well, um, especially yeah. as a smaller company, sort of just coming in and making a you know making a lot of 
real estate for themselves through innovation and sounds and great marketing. Uh, so yeah. that's an example of one. You know, the Matt Chamberlain's uh, signature Istanbul Agap, those are very hard to find. It was a 23-inch. There were two models. I found one like maybe a year and a half ago. I put it up on Instagram. It was gone in like three minutes. Wow. Yeah. Just that's awesome. Because, yeah, and it's a beautiful symbol. It's a, a great symbol. It's a 23. There's not a lot of them. They were hmm. very rare when they were made. Um like I said, there's. I think there were two versions of it, uh, you know. And, and I had, you know, like my inbox, on, you know, was like, "Yo, is that available? Is that available? I'll, I'm going to buy that now. Can you get another? Can you hit me up if I get another?" And I was kind of like, I, I, "Dude, it's, I, I don't know. I just sold, <laughs> I just sold yeah. Van Gogh's sunflowers. I can't run out and find another Van Gogh's sunflowers. Let me go get another one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> I, wow, I, you're always trying. I mean, it's yeah. cool that this is your job. I mean, you've like. Uh, it sounds very obvious, but that's a very cool job well, that you've basically. I mean, I mean you've if you for could, if you could tell my mother that, I'd be appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, mom, get her on the podcast yeah, right are, now. No, there are some people it's, who it's like cool, me. Man. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it's something that I fell into. I I didn't wake up one morning. Um, I never wake up at eight a.m. So I didn't wake up one morning at eleven thirty a.m. Go, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a symbol expert, and you know that's uh, it, it, it. That didn't happen. I sort of fell into it as a guy who's playing drums. I yep. looked at the price of a new symbol, like everybody else. I went to a store, and I was like, "Whoa, okay, I don't know if I can swing that right now." So I went to a pawn shop, and there was a, an old vintage 18-inch Zildjian. Um, it had a dent in it, and it was you know I, I go, "Hey man, how much is this?" And the guy goes. 50 bucks and i kind of looked at it and i'm like well it's old and it's used this is about 25 years ago by the way um yep. those pawn shops have gotten a little wise so yeah <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it i knew i knew that i was like i hit it and i was like you know what this sounds pretty good and i got a gig on friday like and you know i thought i went back i i didn't buy it on spot i went back to a couple more shops i played some other stuff I returned to the pawn shop and I was like, Jerry, can you live with a ding in your symbol if it's only 50 bucks, but it sounds great? And I was like, what the hell am I even asking that question for? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I can live with a dent in the symbol. And you know what? By Saturday morning after my gig, there's going to be a second dent in the symbol that I put in. Yeah. Yeah, so I I bought the symbol for 50 bucks, had it for like 2 years, played a lot of gigs with it, loved it. And I was I started to get you know off the, you know, hey, we're buying tones, we're buying sounds. You know, I'm not buying brands, I'm not buying new. I'm not buying, you know, like oh my god, the single ha the symbol has fingerprints on it. What am yeah. I to do? And it's <laughs> I don't no, just put it up, you know, on the stand and play your music. And and you yeah. know what? If it doesn't suit you at the gig, then take it off, sell it or trade it and get another symbol and put that one on totally. the stand. And hopefully that one suits you and your music. But, you know, part, part of it was money. I didn't have the money when I was younger to go out and buy brand new everything. And also I just, sometimes I heard something used that sounded better to me than the new one. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of more fun to go hunting. And mm -hmm. I, I'm a big believer in, you know, you buy something, you use it. Okay. Don't love it. You sell it. Then you like, like the money staying in the circle of like selling something where, or, or you then sell it and you make a little bit mm -hmm. and then you can buy, two things that's how, kind of how you start a business but that's the fun of it of like i'm not out anything like i've done right. that with camera gear and video and and uh and, and audio and microphones and stuff is like well i'm gonna sell if i sold this mic i would never use it to like pay my car payment i would have <laughs> to put it into like a snare drum or something you know what i mean that's, it's that's what it's, it's supposed to be that that if you you know have learned that then you're already you've won You've won. That's <laughs> yeah. that's how yeah. what I think. I, you know, I get 
a lot of people who ask me, um, you know, what's the best symbol for X? I'm playing this type of music and I need to get the sound of blank. And sometimes that's important. Like, I understand if you're in like a, I don't know, a Steely Dan tribute band or something and you want to get like Steve Gadd sound and you want to get that, you want to be, sure. uh, yeah, you want to uh, have a, a fealty to that sonic palette. Of course, I get it. But um, there isn't a perfect symbol. This is what I have realized is, because it's, it's the question that I get asked the most, like, what do you keep on, you know, what do you hold on to, Jerry? What do you keep? And, you know, what's your most cherished snare? And I'm like, it is mm -hmm. the six and a half by 14 Tama, and like beat ass Tama Imperial Star I bought in Akron, Ohio when I was 16 because not that it sounds the best, it's just the one that has the most value to me spiritually and personally. Sure. Yeah. So totally. that's my I'm not going to sell drum. And yeah. when it comes to finding a perfect symbol, I you know, or a perfect drum, I would encourage everybody to view it like you would a book. You know, you 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 go out, you buy a book. Now you don't know entirely what the book says until you read it. Now you might look at the back cover you might look at the inside there's a conspectus of well here's what the book's about it's nonfiction, historical you go okay i have a i have an idea of what this does but i don't really know so you read the book and you either love the book you like the book or maybe you give up on the book a third of the way through but it's not you didn't mess up like you didn't buy the wrong symbol or you didn't you didn't yeah. make a horrible mistake what you did was you learned and the experience of owning the symbol playing the symbol using it on gigs figuring out what it does figuring out its limitations that is what you gained and that's you yeah. know it may have cost you 150 bucks it may have cost you 850 bucks or 2500 bucks but that is valuable in and of itself, the experience of playing it and figuring it out. And if it's not working for you, like a book, you know, give it to somebody else, let someone else read it, sell the book, and get another book and figure out what that does. Yeah. Totally. Learning what you don't like is a lot of times just as important as learning what you do like. So you can just avoid doing that or do more of this other thing or mm -hmm. buy more of this and... Um, very true. All of that is just extremely true. And um, let me let me ask you a question, kind of circling back to some of the more symbol stuff, because uh, it just occurred to me, a lot of the things we're talking about are like, in rare symbols, a lot of the things you've said so far, and this is kind of obvious to, to everything I've seen, is ride symbol, ride symbol, ride symbol. It seems like most of the rarest symbols are typically ride symbols. What would be some examples of things you've come across that are let's say rare hi-hats or rare crashes or rare splash effect symbols, sure. swish knockers. Um, what are some other symbols you find? You know, Stuart Copeland, famous for his hi-hat sound, right? And he has, yeah. he, uh, you know, it's it's the, the late 70s, early 80s. He had the Peisty Blue Label 602s. I believe they're extra heavies. And I think he played 13s. Um, now he may have, uh, that may have switched out a little bit here and there, that sort of thing. But, yeah. um, that's a perfect example. You got, you got a famous hi-hat sound. Uh, they're very, very rare. Um, it's a rare period. The blue label 602s were the, like the, they, they, it was throughout the eighties and you don't see that many of them. As a matter of fact, I think they, they, um, you know, ushered that entire series out i think in like 1994 and they became increasingly harder to find if uh you know every mm. anybody wants to see an example i have one on my site right now it's a blue label um extra heavy flat ride it's a 22 inch which is extremely rare um i think it's a, it might be a heavy flat ride it's a it's a heavier and extra heavy but it's 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 up there it's a 22 it's it's it has a unique tone it's kind of like the the yeah. roy haynes 
18 inch model but deeper and a lot more real estate and uh kind of darker sounding but still very bright and you know overall very bright and uh with a a, a very pingy focus definition that would be an example of hi-hats neil pert neil peart i should say he had the 13 inch new beats you know fa yep. famous hi-hat sound um you know, I I've had a lot of those from the the late the late seventies, early you know mid early to mid eighties uh, models because that is you know a famous time for Rush's recordings. You know, moving pictures and signals and all that stuff. Um, Tom Sawyer, so thirteen inch new beat hi-hats from the 80s late 70s 80s that would be another example um you know um if you're a ccr fan with i think they're 18 inch hi-hats right 18 inch hi-hats now i don't know if I, yeah i know damn <laughs> i don't i mean i i you know um i think i don't know if those were factory like fat or or two i haven't gone down the rabbit hole i know someone yeah, out there has yeah. has plenty of answers on exactly what was used on those ccr record recordings um but 18 inch hi-hats maybe there were two crash symbols i can't remember maybe there were some custom yeah, one-off sure. um that would be another example steve gad you know the the eak's yep. the early k zildjans from the the, the early 80s the you know um Steve Gadd's entire cymbal setup is famous, you know, with the 14-inch yeah. hats, and he played with, like, two 18s, and they sound like magic when he's playing them. Hmm. Remind me what EAK means. Is that early American K? Yeah. Early, okay. Amer early American K, which... Got it. I believe, you know, that came out, like, 81. There was a famous Zildjian ad with Tony Williams, and... um I believe Zildjian was hand hammering the symbols, like they reintroduced hand hammered symbols for a brief window, like maybe I don't know four years, something like that. And then the the EAKs okay. around eighty five, eighty six, the K uh, craftsmanship sort of changed. You can see it, and you can hear it too. And I get I have some EAKs on the hazelshow dot com website if anybody wants to hear them. So cool. Yeah, your site is like a, uh, even if you're not going to buy a $3,000 symbol or whatever, it's just like a resource to go and, and look at things and see them for yourself so you can be more uh, knowledgeable. But what about like early effects symbols, like the swish knocker and mm. things like that? Do you do, Are those valuable? Do you come across them very often? That's a great question because the early, early effect symbols like the swish knockers, um, those are damn near impossible to find like a swish knocker or a china like a zildjian china from the 40s or 50s is or they're a little more prevalent by the time you hit the 60s but they're still pretty rare yeah the 40s and 50s ones are really really hard to find i i assume it's because they didn't make very many and the ones that they did make probably wound up on the wrong end of a 2B stick like in a Black Sabbath tribute band in 1978. You know, there's just <laughs> yeah, gone. Yeah. So Are, is there so they're they're hard to find, but does that mean they're valuable? That's an amazing question. They are too. They in yes, they are valuable. The swish knocker, but but somebody did once say just because it's rare does not mean it's valuable and a little mm -hmm. piece of my heart broke off that day because <laughs> it's true you can find something and be like i've never seen this before i don't know what it is it's amazing and yet you throw it up for the you know for the great world of drummers to consume and they 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 say get away from me kid you bother me um <laughs> An example that might be low boys. Like you talk about effect symbols, like the hi-hat, right, was originally a low boy. Well, every once in a while you find those yep. like nine-inch sort of brass symbols from way back in the day. They have a tiny little center hole. And you're like, this was probably an effect that, you know, metamorphosized into the hi-hat. But how cool is this? It's 100 years old, you know, 
uh, it, it has this great history of this is a sort of precursor prototype to the hi-hat and it's just I don't know I find that a miracle that it survived a hundred yeah. years but like I think unfortunately drummers sometimes look at it and they go yeah but what am I going to do with it and you're like sure I that sure I could be like a centerpiece for your Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, a hundred year old Zillbell yeah. or something. <laughs> yes. Celebrate it somehow. So I, you know, yeah. I, I, I do think that sometimes people, drummers, we get a little hemmed in by the marketing and what we're supposed to play. I'm supposed to have a six and a half Black Beauty because I'm supposed to have one, as opposed to maybe thinking a little bit outside the box and being like, all right, I'm going to find something to do with these low boys because they're kind of cool, and I'm going to do something with them. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's something, though, where you would see some drummer, like there's guys now, as we've all seen, who set up like uh, like the frying pan connected to a stand, and they play that, and it sounds awesome, or a trash can, a literal trash can lid. I um, I have that it, right now. Yeah. I literally have the Zildjian frying pan right over there in the corner, which oh, cool. I don't think yeah. that was ever released, but I do have one. If anybody is interested in seeing what they look like, they can you know DM me on Instagram or uh, message me at hazelshouldrum at yahoo.com, and I will send you a picture of it. I probably will sell it one of these days. I mean, so it is Zildjian, though. It's a Zildjian. Like, it is... Yeah. It's, but not released, because I've seen people playing them. I, like, um, like I the, I don't know who's, the names are escaping me right now. I know I've seen them, but, like, how do they end up in the world with players if they're not being, you know... Is it just a I think, straight I, from the factory I kind think of thing? Zildjian does have sort of, like, their R&D department where they put things out there for people to try. They may have had... Yeah. I don't know, maybe maybe it was celebrating an artist. Like, I, it's my understanding, say somebody said, hey, I really want you to make a frying pan. They don't make one. They're like, you know what, if we're going to, uh, you know, make a frying pan, we're going to make 30. And we're just going to hand them yeah, out sure. for fun. It, if you would like, Got it. I could uh, dispel all myth and conjecture and go get it. Okay. Jerry has returned. I and have. So, so we, as we just said... <laughs> For, for people for people listening kind of in the car not watching video we'll do our best to explain kind of what we're looking at here and perhaps we'll hear a couple dings on this frying here pan we here. Go, so, here we go here we go all right let's see it ready it's very exciting i'm ready wow that is a zildjian frying pan <laughs> can't cook your eggs on it though because you got a hole there's in a hole in it yeah i know so it kind of you know i mean you know you can put it next to the vic for salt and pepper shaker Yes, exactly. You read my mind. We're, yep. we're talking about Thanksgiving yep. displays, you know. Um, yes. I do want to say on this All Zildjian right. frying pan, uh, for you symbol freaks out there, it's 1098 grams. They're always wondering what the gram weight is. So your frying yeah, pan is are big. 1098 grams. One thing I'll give credit to Zildjian, they put a stamp on it. There's like the actual oh, cool. Zildjian stamp, not just the black ink, but the actual Zildjian stamp, you know, the Turkish symbols made in USA. And they're in this case, you know, there's even the serial number on it. Here we go. Let's Man. see what it does. Let's see what it does. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to play it here. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you're, <laughs> you're good. Okay. Effecty. It sounds good. Yeah, it does a th it does a thing. It has a whoa 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 nature to it, like a good wobble. That's pretty cool, man. You know, I think that there was, you know, there's sort of been this um, Dust Bowl revival type music. You know, maybe sure. the last 10 or 15 years, we're talking about low boys, talking about swish knockers. You're talking about um, early effects symbols, uh, that type of thing. Yep. You know, the Zildjian frying pan, although modern, would probably go in there for some sort of boxcar hobo, you know, <laughs> jamboree. Yeah, you have... Yes, recycled items used as percussion instruments and stuff, or, yeah, which is all super cool. I, th yeah. I think that a lot of, you know, we've we've all been through this era. It's like, you know, there's 
goat hooves on the snare drum and, you know, dice on the floor tom and, you know, uh, all sorts of paraphernalia draped all over the drum set. I think Zildjian was probably just, you know, jumping on that, say like, hey, man, here's another interesting thing. And it does do, yeah. I mean, it does do a little bit of a drum and bass effect thing. Yeah. So, Jerry, as we get close to the kind of kind of close to wrapping up here, I want to ask you like and I'm sure you're going to you can tell me I can't answer it. But <laughs> the simplest questions that someone would probably ask you if you tell them what you do, who's like not really a drummer, they just want a quick answer. What is the rarest symbol out there? I mean, I did own. One of Elvin Jones's Bell Brass Thomas snares. I know that's not wow. a symbol, but that is a but rare piece. Rare. Yeah. Um, that's hard to say. I mean, the, God, that's hard to say. There's so many symbols out there that are one of a kind, unique. Now, if you talk about rare yeah. and worth value, he'd be like... The most valuable. The maybe, mo the, maybe the most valuable. The most valuable. Well, obviously, you know, up there is the Tony Williams K. Yeah. Um, his personal His personal K. K. Uh, you know, things like, obviously, like Neil Peart's, you know, uh, 22-inch, uh, I believe in a Zildjian A and Psy. He had a Made in Canada ride, right? I think the 22, sure, that yeah. would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, John Bonham's, you know, 15-inch, 2002 Sound Edge hi-hats. Got it. So the celebrity yes. thing will really be what's what's adding to the, like, over-the-top John Bonham's mega gong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're like, yeah, I sure. I know, probably a dumb question, but no. sometimes it's you have to ask those questions sure. of like, what's the most rare? Or, you know, things like that. But uh, that celebrity thing really goes far. And some of those prices now you see online are like, geez, Louise, this is insane what things go for. Well, and when you say like, for instance, John Bonham's gong, you're like, the person who's buying that may be a drummer, but it, you know, it can very easily be... Uh, somebody who's not a musician. They just love the history yeah. of it. And, I, you know, yeah. I, I actually do do a lot of um, brokering and deals with the hard rock. So I've oh, I've, cool. I've done, okay. I've had a lot of very famous uh, celebrity-owned drums and cymbals and drum sets pass through my hand, and, and I work out deals um, specifically with the hard rock um, and do it. Very that. nice. Yeah. So I, you know. Yeah. Um, all right, so... Is there, you've had so many drums and cymbals. Let's open it up to drums too. Is there, and maybe we forget about the, the, the celebrity thing because that takes it to another level. Mm -hmm. But is is there anything that you have yet to ever get your hands on, maybe cymbal wise and drum wise, that you're still hunting for that you've, you've yet to be able to acquire? Hmm. I mean, a 24 inch Istanbul K is pretty hard. I have one now. I've owned maybe two or three, but they're pretty hard to okay. find. Um, you know, if there was a 26 out there, I don't know. I've never seen one. I love the huge symbols. There's some vintage Zildjians from, that are 28s, 26s. Um, I love the big symbols. Love them. Um, yeah. That would be something. I mean, I, I will say, if it's a cataloged item, I have owned it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not not <laughs> and it, it, that's not so much bragging. It's just I just by waking up at uh, eleven forty five in the morning, <laughs> but still working hard. <laughs> yes, I have it counts over twenty five years. I do really enjoy symbols so much that um, you know I don't really discriminate. If it's a professional grade symbol, I hunt it down and I and I try and find it. Yeah, I, you know, and I try and you know what I try to sort of it comes through my hands and I want to put it in the right hands. So if I get an 18 inch rude from 1984, there's a guy out there who's looking for that. So I want to put, totally. the, yeah, it's kind of like I want to put the rude into the right guy's hands and I want to put the 13 inch 1981 new beats into the right guy's hands and i i uh, that that's really my goal because that way you get people who are happy with their purchases you get people who are looking for what they're looking for you know for me you know i was given these 
by Maria. Some people might know the girl who knows nothing about symbols on my Instagram as a gift. And, you know, I love this. These are, they're not the yeah. 900 series. They're the 2000 early, you know, the 2000 Pisces from the 80s. They're a weird emerald apple green. And I just like them because they're weird. This is what I want to yeah. play. But, uh, no, they're not worth a thousand bucks. They're not worth 500 bucks. I'd be lucky if I could get two, 300 bucks, 250 bucks. But I, I love yeah. that stuff. You know, I mean, really, the 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 takeaway, like what you said about that, your your Thomas snare is like you're more connected to the the story of how you got a special symbol or one that was gifted to you, because otherwise, it's you know, you're just doing your business. But I think yeah. if you connect with a symbol, it is what it is. And but I, you know, I yeah. like I like symbols as books too. So uh, the other day, I had sort of like a uh, I was playing this sort of a country gig, and I just wanted you know. I needed a nice right down the middle symbol, and I d it didn't have to be anything crazy or fancy or fifteen hundred bucks or whatever. So I, you know, on the way out the door, I grabbed this Zildjian K eighteen inch Sweet Crash, and I chose it because it was familiar to the ear. I was like, if I bring this, it's just a nice sounding Zildjian. It's not gonna it's not gonna disrupt these you know we're playing a number of covers like old time country tunes i was like it's not going to disrupt anything it's not going to be boisterous too loud you know and i learned what it did that particular symbol on the gig i was like oh, i really like this this is nice i mean would i bring it the next gig maybe not no yeah but i learned what it, but it, did. it did its job yeah and i yeah. and i learned oh this is a little bit complex it's thin to paper thin it opens up and allowed capacity but it's it 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 blossoms in a quiet you know volume two and then sure that was enough for me as opposed to like i need to own this symbol the value of playing it on the gig and the experience of using it was like oh cool that was i had a great time the instrument was working with me i wasn't fighting it yeah and no i probably will use something else next time not because it was bad, because I want to continue to explore and learn. Yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So on that note, you said to me before we started that people will very frequently ask you, what should I play or what artist was using this and I want to sound like them? So you are open to helping people with their journey, right? Like if people want to contact you, then you're you're okay with working with them and helping them get their dream symbol. Absolutely. Is that fair to say? Yeah, ab absolutely. That's that's what, you know, when you ask, you know, what does hazelshood.com do or what do I do is hazelshood? I mean, my name's Jerry, of course, but a lot of people know me as hazelshood. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, sure. I I do want to get the right instrument and the right tool into people's hands so that they're when they're playing a show they're actually not thinking about the symbol other than the inspiration it's providing like when i hit this yeah. symbol or i crack the snare i feel good but it's a subconscious thing because you're playing the show and you're having a great time and you're playing your music and you don't want to be taken out of the music which the music is always the most important component always yes. the most important component that i try to i try to tell people you know the gear has a role but it's also supposed to be really fun so don't get super hyper bogged down in the exact gram weight of that crut symbol that ringo played you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you find yeah, one, great. Yeah. If you want to find one, it's fun to hunt. If you find one and it's seven grams off, the one that he played, have fun. Close enough. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I feel like I could talk, there's so many things that just keep coming to mind, but like part of what you do has to be sort of like seeing what might be the next big thing kind of reading the, the tea leaves a little bit about what's going to be the next popular thing that's going to be valuable. Any any tips or tricks on what people should... I know you don't want to give away your secrets, no, but sure. of what people should be thinking about collecting in the future. You know, the, uh, the interesting thing is the symbol and drum market is a market, like stocks. And so people 
pay into it or buy into it or believe it the same way they do with stocks. Like what's going to happen with Verizon? What's going to happen with Tesla? You know, what is it? Should mm -hmm. I buy now? Should I buy Coca-Cola now or wait after, till after the Super Bowl or whatever? You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> drums and cymbals are the same way. You know, it's, it's, and I think there's one thing that like a little piece of my heart dies on this one. I don't know why. <laughs> I think the DW Craviatos and the er, like the earlier Craviatos um, are something that I would, you know, something that I think are going to go up in value. They're at least something I think should go up in value. When you have a drum sure. and it's a solid piece of maple or oak or birch, whatever, and then it's now... A lot of people look at it and they're like, well, it's old or it's used or, well, it's, it doesn't look like a new one. It doesn't have the lustrous shine of the new one. You're like, hey, that's wood or it's metal. These things temper over time and they get sweeter. Kind of like the Stradivarius. Yep. They're better over time. They age, wood ages well. I would say the same about snare drums and cymbals too. So I think those 90s DW Craviatos are fantastic drums. I, I would buy those. I think they're kind of, I think they're undervalued myself because sure. like, you know, they're associated with Johnny Craviato and they're mm -hmm. now 20, 25 years old and they just consistently sound great. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's a good tip. All right, Jerry. Well, let's talk about Indiana Jones for a minute <laughs> because you, uh, you, <laughs> you host a podcast called the Indiana Jones Minute. It's super cool, not drum related at all, but uh, tell everyone about Indiana Jones Minute. Sure, sure. I, I mean, it's it's another love. I kind of just got sucked into it. I mean, I grew up for that that era. Raiders of Lost Ark saw it as a kid, and um, you know, living in Los Angeles and uh, being in the music industry is fantastic. Playing drums, buying drums, hanging out with drummers is great. But I did need, you know, sort of another. I needed something else. It can kind of you can become a little one-dimensional if you're always talking about drums all the time. And, and I realized that yep. you bring in other aspects of your life and, and then you kind of come back and you really enjoy music and the drums in a more fuller way. So my buddies asked me to do this Indiana Jones podcast and um, it's preposterous in a fun way. They, we watch one minute <laughs> of each movie. You know, you watch one minute uh, like minute one or minute two, and then you discuss, you know, that one minute ad nauseum. Um, to, and so, of course, the premise is ridiculous. You're watching one minute of the movie and you're talking about, like, the hats that the people are wearing in the bar in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like, oh, wow, that's weird. Like, that huh. guy's hat's got hats that goes up and it covers his ears. And they're in, <laughs> where they're in Nepal or whatever. So you're like, okay, well... That guy's got a hat on and it's, you know, he's going to be cold when the bar closes because that's a very thin hat. <laughs> but what's yeah. interesting is you, you wind up, we got a lot of guests and experts, like we'd have a hat expert on the show and you start talking about hats and pretty soon you're like, you're not really talking about the movie, you're talking about life. And um, that was sort of one of the yeah. joys of it. And, you know, with the new Dial of Destiny, Indiana Jones 5 came out, we've done all of the movies... Um, one minute at a time. So there's, I don't know, probably 500 episodes or something on the oh Indiana gosh, Jones that's Minute. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. And we have to do the new one. And, you know, it's fun. And the movie, yeah. each movie's well, different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, each movie's different. And we just, we yeah. just do it to kind of, you forget your day and you have a good time. Well, as we know, with what we've just done for an hour and f however many minutes, you can, and people always ask me, like, do you have enough to talk about with the drum history stuff? And it's like, I'm 217 episodes in and there's zero shortage of episodes. There's no shortage of topics. Yeah. And you are case in point of like, if you find something that you like, you can talk about it for a, any number of, of, you can just dissect it. And there's people who will listen, you know, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm glad you're doing that. So uh, I'll put a link in the description for all of that stuff. Cool, thank and you. And hazelshould.com, which is just, I mean, it you it's it is very well curated. I will link to all of your uh, pages and things like that. But you are very well curated. It's kind of the best of the best. Cool. Is I, I feel like you you 
you know, you, you really pay attention to what comes through your hands. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I mean, if there's one thing that listeners could come away with, I would just encourage them to go to the site just to, I mean, the, the, the going to the site is free. You know, or my YouTube channel, the Hazel Hazelshoot YouTube channel. There's, I don't know, probably thousands of symbols that are up there. And you just, you know, if you, you're like, what is an Ed Thigpen crystal ride? Or I don't know what 60s 15-inch new beats sound like. I'd like to hear them. It's really, it's, yeah, of course, I want to sell stuff and all that. But at the same time, it's like there is a library of listening material and uh, that sort of thing that I would encourage people to just go and like look around it's it's free to just listen to things and learn That's about true. symbols and do you like Pisces? well okay what about the new the newer master series do you like those because that's kind of do you like Pisces that came out 10 years ago or are you a vintage Pisces guy how do they compare to zildjans well you can find all those questions out just by sort of listening to symbols on the site yeah yeah what's the difference between an hh yep. and an aa sabian well, you can listen to them and hear and see which one speaks to you. Totally. And and as we have said multiple times throughout this, it's really just about having fun. I mean, that's you can spend all of your money buying symbols and and which, you know, you, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's truly about having fun yeah. and enjoying what you buy and trying it. If you don't like it, sell it and uh and it's cool. I mean, of course a lot of you know, websites do this, but you have gift cards, which is yeah. super cool as we're getting into like fall and towards like the holidays like you know, tell tell your loved ones to buy you a Hazel Should gift card <laughs> and then go and get yeah. a cool symbol yeah. uh, or drum. I mean, you have tons of drums, which I, I'm sure we'll probably have you back on the podcast at some point because you have so much knowledge. So I'd love you to just, just think of some other cool sure. topics that we can cover down the road. I, I um, have hundreds of this things, has been awesome. literally hundreds of symbols and drums that are not yet listed. So, I mean, my, one of my, you know, issues is I have to get them up as quick. You know, I try to get them all up as, as quickly as possible so that everybody can hear them and see them. So, I mean, I have literally yeah. hundreds that are not even yet listed. So I'd say just, if you don't see something that you dig, come back. Cause there's going to be something different next week. So, yeah. 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 And then you, you are, I mean, we should have said this right from the top. I think it's obvious with most people on the show, you're a very esteemed drummer. You've played with Dick Dale. You've got a whole, you're a working drummer. Yeah. So that's, that's always cool to, to know about as well. But, um, so Jerry, I, I mean, I think we told everyone, I usually say where people can find you, but you want to say your social media accounts sure. and everything. I'm pretty sure it's obvious, but yeah. tell people where to find you. The website's hazelshud.com. You know, I'm hazelshud on Instagram. Uh, if you're Facebook, there's a Hazel Should Facebook page. And, you know, I would encourage everybody. I'm a little bit nuts. So if you want, you can text me or call me. My number is 216-577-7552. That's a good way to get a hold of me. Just text me and say, hey, I saw you on the Drum History Podcast. You know, I, you know, I had a question about this symbol or that symbol. I'm happy to help. I really am. And, you know, on the website, you can listen to everything. If there's something up there, there's a video of it, so you can hear it. And you know, I'm cool. doing I'm doing videos every day, so I'm happy to help people find symbols or at least find the sound that they're looking for. Cool. And all of that takes time and effort. None of that super. I mean, it, it it all takes time. So everyone in the community appreciates you you doing it. So um, it's H A Z E L S H O U L D. Jerry, thank you for doing this, man. I had a Awesome time talking to you, and I uh, hope to have you back soon. But uh, thanks for your time, man. Oh, this was great. Of course, Bart. It would be my pleasure. I would come on the show anytime. time. 